All right, here we are with an application of linear equations. This is lesson nine of our unit. So in unit one, you saw the following problem. You sent a photo of you and your family on vacation to seven Facebook friends. If each of them sends it to five of their friends and each of those friends sends it to five of their friends and those friends send it to five more, how many people, not counting yourself, will see your photo, assuming that no friend receives the photo twice? So in unit one, you were asked to express your answer in exponential notation. The solution is given here. First step, the number of friends you sent the photo to was seven. Then the number of friends seven people sent the photo to would be seven times five. Then the number of friends seven times five people sent the photo to would be seven times five times five. And last, they, it would be seven times five times five times five. So therefore, the total number of people who received the photo would be seven plus the first, per, the first step, seven times five, the second step, then seven times five squared, because you have five times five, that'd be the third step, and seven times five to the third power, which represents step four. So let's refer to you sending the photo as the first step, then your friends sending the photo to their friends as the second step, and so on. In the original problem, there were four steps. Assuming the trend continues, how would you find the sum after 10 steps? Well, we would continue the pattern until we got to the 10th step. But what if I asked you how many people received the photo after 100 steps? Well, it would take a long time to continue that pattern to the 100th step. So we want to be able to answer the question for any number of steps, and for that reason, we will work towards expressing our answer as a linear equation. So for convenience, let's introduce some symbols. Since we're talking about steps, we will refer to the sum after step 1 as S sub 1, the sum after step 2 as S sub 2, the sum after step 3 as S sub 3, and so on. Thus, the first step being S sub 1 would be equal to 7. For S sub 2, it would be 7 plus 7 times 5. For S sub 3, it would be 7 times 7 times 5 plus 7 times 5 squared. And the last one, you get the picture. So what patterns do you notice within each of the equations 1 through 4? Well, they contain the same, some of the same terms. For example, equation 2 is the same as equation 1, except equation 2 has the term 7 times 5. Similarly, equation 3 is the same as equation 2, except equation 3 has the term 7 times 5 squared. So what you notice is true, however, we want to generalize it in a way that does not require us to know one step before getting to the next step. So let's see what other hidden patterns there are. So we're going to begin with equation 2, and which is s sub 2 is equal to 7 plus 7 times 5. Well, let's start off by subtracting 7 from both sides of the equation, so that we have s sub 2 minus 7 equals 7 times 5. Then we're going to add the expression 7 times 5 squared, which kind of represents the fact that we are on step 2, but if you notice, this actually comes from step, this is part of the equation from step 3. But we figure since we're on step 2, then it would be 5 squared. So what happens when we add 7 times 5 squared to both sides of the equation? Well, by using distributive property on the right side, we can factor out a 5 from this expression here and get 5 times the quantity of 7 plus 7 times 5. Well, interestingly enough, I put this in green because what can this be substituted for? Well, if you look up here, it is the same as what is the definition of S sub 2. So now we can substitute. Notice that the grouping on the right side is exactly S sub 2, so we're going to substitute that and call it 5 times S sub 2. 
So s sub 2 minus 7 plus 7 times 5 squared is equal to 5 times s sub 2. So this equation is a linear equation in s sub 2. It is an equation we know how to solve. And if it looks like you can't, pretend that s sub 2 is x, you would get x minus 7 plus 7 times 5 squared equals x, and that might not look so daunting. So now let's do something similar with equation 3. If this is equation 3, then by subtracting 7 to both sides, we have this expression on the right side. But now we're going to add the expression 7 times 5 to the third power, meaning that this is the third step. So adding part of the fourth step to it, we end up with factoring out a 5. And then again, I put this in green. Notice that this is the same as what the original S sub 3 step is. So again, grouping on the right side of the equation is exactly the equation we began with, s sub 3, so we have the following. This side of the equation is equal to 5 times s sub 3. So this is a linear equation in s sub 3. So let's work together to do something similar with equation 4. So here is equation 4. What did we do first in each of the equations 2 and 3? Well, we subtract 7 from both sides of the equation. So we have the following. s sub 4 minus 7 equals the rest of the equation. So what did we do next? Well, we add 7 times 5 raised to a power to both sides of the equation. When it was the second step, the power of 5 was 2. When it was the third step, the power of 5 was 3. Now that it is the fourth step, the power of 5 is going to be 4. So now we have this equation including the 7 times 5 <coughs> to the fourth power and this side of the equation with 7 times 5 to the fourth power. So what do we do after that? We use distributive property to rewrite the right side of the equation by factoring out a 5. So now we have 5 times the rest of the equation, which again is the same as what we started with for s sub 4. And so we're going to substitute that, and we finally have s sub 4 minus 7 plus 7 times 5 to the 4th power is equal to 5 times s sub 4. So let's look at the equations all together. Here is for step 2, for step 3, and for step 4. So what do you think the equation would be for step 10, or s sub 10? Well, according to this pattern, it's going to be s sub 10 minus 7 plus 7 times 5 to the 10th power. Again, mirroring what has happened up here. Whatever step we're on, that's the power of 5 we need. And it's going to be equal to 5 times s sub 10. So now we're going to solve this equation because that was our original question. How many people would see this after 10 steps? We're not going to simplify 1 minus 5, as you will see for the reason explained above. We want to figure, we want to see what's going to happen when we get to 1 minus 5. So, here is stepping through. We set up the problem. And now what we're going to do is get rid of the s sub 5, or 5 times s sub 10, and bring it over to the left side of the equation. When we do that, we end up with 0. But now we can also factor out s sub 10 using distributive property. So that gives us s sub 10 times the quantity of 1 minus 5. Again, we're going to leave this for now. So now what we're going to do is we need something over here to replace the 0. 
So we're going to take our constants here and we're going to add 7 since we have minus 7 and we're going to subtract subtract the 7 times 5 to the 10th power and so by doing that now we have something on the right side of the equation which is 10 uh, s sub 10 times the quantity of 1 minus 5 is equal to and we've kind of combined some steps here we have factored out a 7 and we have 1 minus 5 to the 10th power Notice what is happening here, we have some, something that looks similar, so we're going to, that's why we're not, um, we're not simplifying this as 1 and making it minus 4. Last step is to divide by this, and now we have 7 times the quantity of 1 minus 5 to the 10th power divided by 1 minus 5. Now you might be saying, well, wait a minute, this is going to give us a negative number. Well, this is also going to give us a negative number 2, and a negative divided by a negative will end up being positive. Now to verify this answer that I'm going to show you, you'll need your calculator. Because you are going to need to figure out what 5 to the 10th power is. Subtract that from 1, multiply it by 7, and then divide it by a negative 4. And the answer will be 17,089,842. So after 10 steps, 17 million plus people will see your photo. All right, exercises one and two, complete the exercises and continue the video. You're going to need a calculator to speed up the process to find the answer. When you're done, continue the video. All right, so this is what you should have. If we wanted to find the 15th step, just again applying the same pattern, you should have s sub 15 minus 7 plus 7 times 5 to the 15th power is going to equal 5 times the step s sub 15. Now, they went ahead and showed the, um, the process just like we did, but really if you're going to get the same thing down here. S sub 15 is going to be equal to 7 times the quantity of 1 minus whatever, pa uh, whatever step you are on times, or which will be the power of 5. So we're on the 15th step, so it's going to be 5 to the 15th power, and then 1 minus 5. And the answer is 53,405,761,717. So that's how many people would see your, fo uh, your photo. All right, you won't have to do anything this complicated for exercises three, four, 3 through 11, but it does have you practice writing equations from a word problem and then solving them. So after each one, check your answer. All right, here is for problem one. X is 17. I'm sorry, for problem three. For exercise 4, the answer is negative 8, negative 7, negative 6, and negative 5. Notice that you start with one number, and then if it's consecutive, you're just taking that number and adding 1 to it. Take that number, add 2. Take that number, add 3. So that's where you get this being whatever the number is. It's going to be 1 after that, 2 after that, and 3 after that. Okay, exercise five. The book has 234 pages. And for exercise six, the answer is 145. For exercise seven, the number is five. And for number eight, the length of the rectangle is 9 and 6 tenths inches, and the width is 12 and 2 tenths inches, so the area is going to be 17, or 117 and 12 hundredths inches. Okay, for problem 9, 43 tickets were sold on each of the five days. For number 10, Shauna skateboarded 40 minutes on Monday, 80 minutes on Tuesday, and 60 minutes on Wednesday. And for number 11, 
determine the lengths of AC and BC. Again, using our proportions, X would be 3 and 1 tenth, which means the length of AC is 7 and 2 tenths millimeters, and the length of BC is 15 and 2 tenths millimeters. All right, so we can rewrite equations to develop a pattern and make predictions. And we know that for problems like these, we can generalize equations so that we do not have to do each step to get our answer. And we learned how equations can be used to solve problems. All right, see you in class.